Hi, and welcome to section two of Complete Bootstrap Course. Now you'll find me at the start of every section so that I can tell you what I expect you by far now, what kind of things I expect that you would be ready now, and what you can expect in this section. Now, so far we have just covered up one basic section, but I expect a few things with you. Now I expect that you should be ready with your favorite editor. Mine happen to be Atom, I'll be using it throughout the course, but in case if you are a diehard fan of Sublime Text, hey, I, I get a back off there, I completely understand that. Now, I also expect that you might be having a CDN install of the bootstrap. Now, here is one quick word that I want to get in here. Now, if you want to get started with the CDN, you should always be connected to through the internet because I hope you understand that it's a network content delivery network system which works on the internet. Now, in case internet is an issue, then you might want to download the jQuery, the Tether, and the Bootstrap JS as well as Bootstrap CS on, on your system, and we'll walk through there. So that was section one, quite easy and quite friendly. Now, what you can expect in the section two. Now, this is the section where we are going to first touch our Bootstrap. And you might have noticed that browser applies some of its own default styling to your text tags, your paragraphs, and that is one of the reason why your website looks a little bit different on Chrome than Mozilla Firefox, and we won't be getting started on Internet Explorer, so let's leave that. So we'll learn how we can just override those style, styles simply by importing our CSS file of the bootstrap. Now, our main focus in this section would be text and images. We'll walk through with a lot of text tags like paragraphs, h1, displays, and that's all. Further, we'll also explore what are the images, what we can do with the images in the bootstrap. Now, as soon as we learn that, we'll try to throw up everything on our very cool landing page. Now, just a quick word in here, I would not call this as a perfect landing page. A perfect landing page should always have a call to action button like buy now or check more or something. Now, but we haven't learned about the buttons yet. Not at all any problem, we are going to just learn and apply whatever we have learned in the project. Obviously, things are coming up more into the course, so you don't have to worry about anything there. I think this is quite enough prep talk there, and now let's go ahead and move into the section and write some code.